Hi everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron. I've got a bit of a different setup today because I'm going to be dyeing, swatch dyeing, six fibre reactive dyes on both cotton and a, a animal based yarn. So I've got here six 10 gram mini skeins of 75% uh, supermush merino, 25% nylon. I've got here 12 pieces of 100% cotton. It's actually an old bed sheet that I've just ripped up. So what I'm going to do here, each of these is for one lot of uh, dye. So I've got the little tub for the yarn and then I've got two little yogurt pots. Uh, this is going to be for the cotton and I've got labeled it with the dye that I'm using and DUI which means dye under ice and DOI, which means dye over ice. So those are two different tie dyeing techniques. And I just want to see if having dye underneath the ice or over the ice makes any difference. I'm going to start off with doing this one, which is Mermaid's Dream. So I'm going to put the little cotton swatches in there. I've just squeezed them off. First of all, put my little tray of ice. Add which one? Dye on ice. So there we go. Put a bit of ice on this, and this will just melt. It's a yeah, that'll do. Just those two. Now this. Ooh. Oh, I can see in there. I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, little specks of different. Oh, there's, it looks like there's a bit of yellow and red in there. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of sprink sprinkle some on there. Ooh. That. Gorgeous. I'm not doing a good job of getting it on top of the ice, though. Maybe I'm just trying some of my fingers. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. And just put dye straight on the fabric from that one. Okay, I'll do. I have got my mask on because I don't want to breathe this stuff in. And I'm just going to add dice on top of that one. So I'm just going to let the, just let everything melt now on that. And let's do the yarn. So I'm going to weigh out, uh, because I've got um, 10 grams of yarn, I want to dye the yarn at an approximately 1% depth of shade. So I need 0.1 gram of this dye, which is extremely hard to measure. Uh, there we go. Point 0.1, 0 0.12, close enough. Okay. Add a little bit of water, dissolve that. That is a stunning blue. Now all this equipment is dedicated for dyeing. I don't use it for food preparation. These boxes are just old takeaway containers, yogurt pots. Just, I have two young children, so I have hundreds of yogurt pots just lying around. And let's add a teaspoon of vinegar because this is, uh, is it? so we add the vinegar for plants, but uh, no, we add the vinegar for animal-based fibers such as super mush merino and soda ash is needed for plant-based. A bit more water. Now this is just plain tap water from the pre-soak actually. Here's the 10 grams, just pop that in there. A touch more water. Give it plenty of room to move about. And Now I'm just going to leave these out in the sun in my 
very warm porch for several days. There we go, I'll cover these up as well. And that's it, I'm going to be doing this with all of the other dies. pop this is very coarse in comparison to some of the other dyes and I'm wondering if this has a lot of lemon yellow in so I found that that one is quite a hard a coarse hard uh, dye to speckle with so we're done with the cotton let's get on and do the yarn <laughs> we've got our mermaid stream orange crush daffodil dragon fruit up here this beautiful pink uh, blue violet and lime pop now these are all fiber reactive dyes from dharma okay now i'm going to add a couple more ice cubes to these cover cover these up and i'm going to let them sit for at the very least 24 hours until after the ice has finished melting. It's been about 24 hours since I started this and the ice has completely melted. And have a look at these here we've got. Uh, this is the dragon fruit, one, oh, not pretty? And I love this, this is lime pop. I've got that lovely green and yellow in there. I hope I keep those colors too. And then this one and this one are the blue violet. You can see all that color is just from one dye. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna leave these for probably another 24 hours before I wash them and let them dry. I had intended to leave these for a couple of days, but it's been closer to a week now. So they're definitely ready to wash. Now, because this is fiber reactive dyes, I'm not expecting the water to have completely cleared. So let's just put these on. Let's so see the lime pop. Mostly, there's just a little bit of green in there. And this one. Yeah, I'm just putting this on the little zip tie just to try and keep it a little bit neater. This was blue violet, that's pretty much empty. Empty clear thing. Uh, orange brush. Yeah, that water is clear, fantastic. Uh, mermaid dream. Oh yeah, wow, that's that's gone, that's clears completely too. And that is a beautiful colour, absolutely beautiful colour. Dragon fruit, wow, that is bright. Now, when you get into a tangle, it is best to leave it until you're dry and to try and untangle it. But I'm just trying to find a, there we go, that's better. It's easy to get a, Part in it that I could find it, I could open up. And finally, daffodil. Yep, and that, that looks like it's cleared too. Brilliant. Uh, now, before I put these in the, I, I left these in my porch for a week because my porch gets nice, the nice sun in the afternoon. It's been 
quite hot this week. Now I did use do this in the evening, so it wasn't quite as hot. So I did give these a quick blast in the microwave, just for two minutes each in 30 seconds, just to give it a little bit of a boost because fiber reactive dyes start reacting as soon as, as it dissolves in water. So I just wanted to help it on its way a bit. It doesn't look like there's any bleeding. And a little bit of washing up liquid just to remove any particles that might not have um, dissolved, get rid of the vinegar smell. But it doesn't look like there's any bleeding at all. Brilliant. So I'm going to wash, rinse these out a few more times then you can hang up to dry and then I'll be back for the cotton swatch samples. Okay now I'm on to the cotton swatch samples. These ones were dye over the ice so I put the dye so I put the ice in first and then the dye. I'm honestly not really expecting much difference between this and the dye under ice just because they've been in for so so long and um because these are cotton the, oh, let's think this through. Okay, I probably should have put gloves on. Oh well, too late now. I'm going to give these a rinse through. Because these are cotton, they won't have completely um, exhausted, as you can see. Oh, okay. There's some nice breaking in this one. The, and um, mermaid, mermaid dream. Yeah. Rinse that one through. I'm going to quickly rinse these through and then probably wash them properly together. Yeah, I should have put gloves on. Oh well, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I'm going to treat these just like I do with yarn. I'm going to keep rinsing until uh, the water runs clear. Now with cotton, I know that can take longer than it does with yarn. Ooh, that's a gorgeous purple. That's purple, uh, what was it, blue violet. There's a lot of blue runoff, but there's a lot of purple that has stayed in this. I'm going to keep rinsing all these now until the water runs clear. And then I'm going to do the same with the uh, other swatches, which was dye under ice. And here is everything finished. Okay, so we'll start off with Monarch Orange. And see, this one was dyed under ice, with the, dye, the dye was under ice. This one, the dye was over ice, and this was just the skein of yarn. Now this is pretty solid. It's an absolutely gorgeous color on the yarn. And I can't really see much of a difference between the under ice and over ice. Maybe over ice is slightly paler than the under ice, but you can see it's got some lovely shades and got some of the yellows coming through and tiny bits of the red that it's made up of as well. Next up, we've got Daffodil. Again, the yarn. I think this is a lovely solid color and a beautiful bright yellow. It has, the dye hasn't broken on this. We can see here on the, this is under ice, dye under ice, dye over ice. And again, we've got some lovely yellows, but also some sort of almost orangey patches as well. Um, and again, I can't, I can't really see much of a difference between the two and I'm not sure if this is because I left it for so long um, maybe there's a difference if you don't leave it for quite as long because I left this for a week I think it, yeah it was a week and it was sitting in that dye all that time so I wonder if there's if that sort of came into play with it maybe I needed to leave it for uh, say 24 hours not sitting in the next. dye and next we've got mermaid's dream this is an absolutely stunning blue on this yarn. I'm 
I love this blue. I'm going to be using this all the time. I, I just know. And with the dye under ice, dye over ice, and this one has broken. So we've got beautiful blues, we've got the yellow spots, and we've got greens in this, and it's just absolutely stunning how it is. Again, I can't really see the difference between the under ice and over ice. Maybe there's a few more yellow patches in the over ice. Uh, I, but again, the, di the differences are subtle, but yeah, I think they're beautiful how they this are. This one is blue violets, and this one's quite interesting, I think, because with the yarn, it is a bit patchy. This, that could have just been how I dyed it, though. And it's this beautiful sort of dark blue, sort of a bluish purple colour, but it's the fabric that I think is amazing. Uh, this was dye under ice and this was dye over ice. Now I noticed when I washed these out, uh, the water was this colour and a lot of blues ran out when I started washing these and it's left with this gorgeous purpley blue uh, pink just absolutely stunning I I love this I think I'm going to be doing a lot of cotton dyeing with this because this is just one dye and it's made these beautiful breaking patterns I'm so happy with this I wonder if I'll be able to capture that on yarn that's going to be a challenge I'm gonna I, I want to try now and this one is dragon fruit and this is just an absolutely stunning pink both on this yarn and on the fabrics, now there's no breaking in this that I can see, which means I can only see the pink. I can't see any other colours that have gone in to make up this. Um, this was dye under ice, dye over ice. Now this one definitely looks darker than that one because with the dye underneath the ice, the dye was straight on the fabric. So it's obviously bound to that fabric a lot quicker than this one. So this is a quite a nice difference between the two. And lastly, we have Lime Pop. Now on the yarn, this is just an absolutely stunning green. Uh, it's quite similar to Radioactive, I think. I'm going to have to compare the two, see how they, they look together. Uh, and on the fabric, this was dye under ice, dye over ice. Uh, it's very yellow. It's a lot more yellow than green, I think. Yeah, it's quite... I mean, there are sort of little patches of green, but it's mostly yellow. I wouldn't have guessed that it was one dye that did this and these. And this is one of the main reasons why I did these swatches, because how a dye reacts with animal-based fibres, like this superwash merino, is can be quite different to how it reacts with cotton. Now, this is Lime Pop and this is Radioactive, so they are quite very very similar i'd say the rad radioactive is just a shade darker than the lime pop so thank you very much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it i do have some more fiber reactive dyes that i want to swatch both with yarn and with cotton so i will be doing that in the upcoming weeks if you enjoyed the video please click like and subscribe to my youtube channel i aim to produce a new tutorial every monday and i do like to experiment with different dyes and fibers and techniques so every week there will be something different thank you so much for watching